Hello, my name is Ling Wing, and I'm a third year postdoc in the Department of Neurology at Brigham's and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. I've always been fascinating with science, uh, how the world works. And as a little girl in Vietnam, I always said, Nhà khoa học nói là, which translated to scientists say. The scientists say dinosaurs used to walk the earth 65 million years ago. Scientists say elephants are super smart. Scientists say there are millions of microbes that can fit onto the tip of a sewing needle. And in middle school, when I wrote about the person that inspired me, I wrote about Sir Charles Darwin and her travels to many lands, uh, his observations and his proposal of the theory of evolution. So I imagine myself to be a similar traveler to, to travel through different lands and to make discoveries. Um, so uh, it's, it's been a lifelong fascination for me, although I can pinpoint the time when I become really interested in neuroscience. And that was when I first saw an immun immunofluorescence staining image of a neuron. And I was like, oh, what is this cell? Look at this glorious dendrites and spines. And uh, at, at that moment, I knew that I would be committed to neuroscience uh, for a while. And I, I used to imagine myself to be Sir Charles Darwin and travel to different lands. So in a, in a way, I'm doing the same thing. I'm traveling through the brain to imagine different cell types and to the interior of the cells to look at you know, DNA, RNA, and proteins. So I'm also a traveler making discoveries, uh, except uh, in, uh, in, inside the brain and in the cell. Non-coding RNAs in neurodegenerative diseases so when you think of RNAs, you likely think of messenger RNAs that are translated into proteins. Non-coding RNAs are not translated into proteins and they can do lots of things. And the most important things is that there are lots and lots of non-coding RNAs. It is estimated that there is more than 100,000 non-coding RNA transcripts in human. And a lot of these transcripts are specific uh, to the brain and to human. They're not found in other tissues. They're not found in other species. And are these non-coding non RNAs make us who we are? Uh, do they contribute to you know, why we are smarter than other animals and why we develop dementia? So I'm examining, I'm examining these non-coding RNAs uh, in neurons and in the context of neurodegenerative diseases. I've always been interested in science, although my path from to from being a child to here has been a fairly long-winded path. So I'm from Vietnam and I went to high school in Singapore. And then from there, I went to college in Massachusetts, to grad school in Connecticut, and then back to Massachusetts um, for my postdoc. And I would say that I think one problem I remember was the language to, to transition to learning biology from Vietnamese to English. I remember it took me a really long time to understand what a cell membrane was because you, you don't run into the word membrane in everyday uh, English language or even like in everyday written English. So there was quite a transition to, to learning um, about to, to learning about biology in English. Um, I, I've been helped along the way by many people who spent a lot of time with me explaining to me the various different terms in English. And I remember one professor in college told me that my writing was very good. And at that time was like, oh, I, I felt this, you know, sense of like, oh, I can actually be a good writer, even as a, as, you know, not, not a native speaker of, of English. Um, in terms of science, I've also changed my topic quite a bit. Uh, I studied polymer chemistry in college, and then I switched to neuroscience because neurons are so pretty. I studied calcium signaling in chemotherapy-induced cognitive impairment in grad school. And now I'm studying non-coding RNAs in neurodegenerative diseases. So I'll say um, I'm, I'm fascinated about the brain uh, and how it works and how it contributes to our identity. And that's the topic I will stay uh, for my research. But the exact, uh, the exact field doesn't matter. I can be studying non-coding RNAs. I can be studying circuits. I can be studying a specific proteins. As long as I can keep thinking about you know, how this contribute to how the brain works and how we are who we are. I've definitely uh, encountered what I call a post, uh, a mid post dark life crisis. Um, so when I think about my strength and, uh, and my interests, I, I love science and love being at the bench. And 
I love the thrill of making a, a new discoveries. So, and I love mentoring young students, like, you know, to see them light up when they get their first solid asterisk, by which I mean a statistical significance in, in their experiments. Um, so I want to stay in academia and to move up uh, as a faculty position. However, I've also been involved in the advocacy efforts uh, for scientists. I'm the chair of the advocacy committee of our postdoc association. I was a delegate in the ASBMB advocacy training program, actually, and I start to see that there are gaps in academic culture that cause people to, to leave because by no fault of their own. So in addition to you know, conducting research and training um, the next generations of scientists, I'm also hoping to get involved in uh, research administration and advocacy to, to improve uh, the working and living conditions for scientists. I, first off, it may sound strange, I love the act of doing science. I love pipettings a lot. Um, it's, it may sound strange, and I, I love checking on myself every day to see how they're going. So for at the moment, I'm trying to make this like neuroplastoma cells into like more, more like neurons, and I check on them every day, and was, I give them encouragement, like, go cells, you can do it, you can become a neuron. So I, I, I love just being at the bench and doing experiments. Uh, I love making discoveries especially unexpected discoveries. And uh, I enjoy working with, uh, with students like to, to help them you know, start doing the first experiment and writing their first uh, project. So I, I've been involved in training a lot of students and that, that is an experience that I enjoy tremendously. So I, I do have advice for, for students that I train. You know, the first is to not feel overwhelmed. You know, there's been so much discovery, there's so much knowledge that has accumulated over hundreds of years by millions of scientists. Um, but, you know, just, just get in, just learn one fact per day, just, just learn about the name of one protein, and eventually, you know, you will start to see little gaps that you, you can fulfill. Uh, the next thing is to develop very solid technical skills, so you have to be able to trust your data. So, you know, when my students, like, got, like, no difference for five different uh, experimental groups, it's not a failure, it's like, wow, yeah, your skills are really good, like, you, you got no change, but it's not easy to get a note change. You have to be very consistent with your pipetting and your, and your other steps. Um, yeah, and the other thing is to keep, better, keep excessive notes, like keep more notes than they'll think they ever need. And I think it's important because nowadays we'll, we'll rely so much on our devices that we forget the art of just writing information down. And you know these notes will be the basis for their dissertation or their manuscript. And these notes might be very important for making very unexpected discoveries that uh, they did not think about in the first in the first place. And the last is just to enjoy the process. Um, it can be stressful at times doing research and get a, a no difference, but so you have to make the process interesting. Uh, when I think about the brain uh, in dementia, I think of the different cells that, you know, members of very dysfunctional families that don't talk to each other, attack each other. And that's how I, I keep I keep going on like, Hmm. I make up like stories about the different cells and different RNAs and, and find these silly moments in, in my everyday research. Mm -hmm.